Well, good morning, everyone. It's nice to see everyone here today. Uh, if you can, would you uh, please stand and join us for worship this morning? I search a world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise and treasures of fate are never known. Then you came along and put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. And I'm not afraid. To show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley, and there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again oh, there's nothing better than you there's nothing better than you Lord there's nothing nothing is better than you dancing you give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory you're the only one who can you turn graves into gardens you turn bones into armies you turn seas into highways you're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Better than you, there's nothing. Better than you, Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. lovely to see all of you this morning on another foggy Wisconsin day. Um, if this is your first time with us, we would love for you to stop at our welcome desk and meet with our connections team. We have a gift for you, and we would love to just spend a few minutes getting to know you. Um, at this time, we're going to have Nate just introduce a fun forged event coming up. Good morning. So I just want to talk briefly about the men's retreat. Um, as you can see on the screen, we're planning that for May 17th through the 19th, which is about a month later than we've done it in the past. Um, most of the intent there is I think fish come in shallower around that time of year. So um, hopefully we can uh, maybe do a little fishing tournament or something fun. But uh, still kind of in the planning phase to some degree. But this is actually live for registration um, on the website and the app. I think the thought process is just in the past we've, we've maybe seen that in general men maybe wait until the last minute to do stuff. So my thought was we'll get it out there right away. 
Um, Harvest Columbus, I, you know, I, I rode down to No Regrets yesterday with Carl Grieb, and uh, I think they're fully on board to come again this year, so excited about that. Um, and I think the last thought here is just uh, maybe as a little motivation to get registered. If you go on the app or the website, do the registration before the end of February, we're going to put you in a drawing to win a, um, a two-person set of tickets to the Fireside Theater down in Fort Atkinson. So, wives, <laughs> here's an opportunity to light a fire. It just helps, I think, with the planning to understand attendance and some other details. So, we really appreciate that. Um, additionally, I just wanted to touch on the fact that at the No Regrets Conference, I got the snazzy little pullover yesterday. Um, really just a blessing to be there with um, thousands of men in person, worshiping, um, you know, soaking up the word. Uh, and just a great reminder, outside of all the serving, the activities that go on related to the day-to-day -day church stuff, the reminder to abide in Christ. It's like we get so focused on all the things, all the, all the responsibilities, the serving, um, just a lot of really great reminders there. All that content from yesterday, if you didn't go, is available on the No Regrets app. So all the teaching and um, I think even some of the worship session stuff is, in, is included. Um, so yeah, if you, if you didn't get to go and you wish you had, that's all available for free. And there's lots of men here that, that went yesterday, so they can give you some details on that too. So with that, let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for a beautiful morning, um, just seeing the frost on the trees and, uh, you know, even in an unseasonably warm time for this, this time of year, um, just a reminder of how awesome you are, the beauty all around us. Uh, I thank you for everyone that's here this morning, for the, the heart of worship. As we, as we worship you, I just pray that... Uh, you would receive the glory, but also that we would be reminded of all your promises, Lord, because um, truly there is nothing, there's nothing better than you, and we need to, we need to hear that. Amen. Amen. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. The emblem of suffering and shame And I love that old cross Where the dearest and best For a world of lost sinners was slain So I cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown Oh, the old rugged cross so despised by the world as a wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it to dark Calvary. So I'll cheer cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown the old rugged cross I will ever be true, its shame and reproach gladly bear. And he'll call me someday 
to my home far away where is glory forever I'll share so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling and exchange it someday for a crown I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown You may be seated. Well, this morning as we pause and spend some time in reflection and celebration for the Lord's Supper, I just want to read for us a passage of Scripture from John chapter 1, verses 9 through 14, which says this, So the true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him, but to all who did receive him. Who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory is the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. One of the fundamental truths of God's long history with human beings is simply this, that God loves to be with people. In the beginning, God walked with humans in the garden. And when Adam and Eve disobeyed God and invited chaos into his good and perfect world, God went to find them when they were hiding from him. And when God rescued his people from slavery in Egypt, he journeyed with them in a cloud of fire. And he literally pitched his tent, the tabernacle, in the center of their community. When we first hear of the Messiah coming in Isaiah 7, 14, we learn that he will be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And when Jesus entered human history, taking on our flesh and blood, John 1 says he dwelt with us. The literal meaning there is that he pitched his tent or tabernacled among us. And now the Lord has sent his spirit to live in us and to move among us. And so this morning, as we reflect and as we partake together in the Lord's Supper, I'd encourage you to take a few minutes in the quiet of your heart to think about all the ways that God has pursued you in order to be with you. And in that, thank Jesus for loving you so much that he freely gave up his life on the cross, becoming your sin so that you might have eternal life and spend eternity then with him because he desires to be with his people. And so this morning, as we... As we uh, uh, celebrate the Lord's Supper together, reflect and remember those things, and uh, um, I will um, just remind you all that those in the balcony, we have uh, elements up, up on the table up there for you, the same in 1025 place, we've got elements at the table for you to self-serve, those in the main worship center will be serving you in just a minute, uh, but I would just want to remind you as well that if, if you don't know Jesus, if, if, you, if you have never trusted in what Christ has done for you on the cross, we ask that you just uh, pass by the plates and just uh, reflect and ask God to make himself real to you. Otherwise, we, op- we celebrate what's called open communion table here. You do not have to be a member of Harvest to, uh, to tar- take with us as long as you have trusted in Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And so at this point, I'd, I'd invite our ushers to come forward and uh, serve the elements as we sing and reflect on the fact that God pursues us because he wants to be with us. sorrows, Lamb of God, by his own betrayed, a sin of man and wrath. 
wrath of God has been on Jesus laid. Silent as he stood accused, beaten, mocked, and scorned. Bowing to the Father's will, he took a crown of thorns. And oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise and honor unto thee. Sent of heaven, God's own son, to purchase and redeem and reconcile the very ones who nailed him to the tree. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation, will your love poured out over now my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise and honor on to thee. Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, do, which is for you, do this in remembrance of me. Let's take and eat. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, supper saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink, eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, we thank you for coming to live with us and for pursuing us so much so that you sent your son to die for us. We thank you, Jesus, for what you did for us on the cross, that we might have eternal life with you. And thank you for sending your spirit to live in us. May we live for you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Would you please stand and join us in continuing worship? Oh, that rugged cross. Oh, that rugged cross, my salvation. Where your love poured out over me. Now my soul cries out, Hallelujah, praise and honor to thee. Now my debt is paid, it is paid in full. By the precious blood that my Jesus spilled, now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the Son sets free 
my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands, his feet my Savior on that cursed tree body bound and drenched in tears they laid him down on Joseph's tomb the entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all alone oh the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore for endless days. We will sing Your praise, O Lord, O Lord our God. Then on the third at break of dawn the son of heaven rose again oh trampled death where is your sting the angels roar for Christ the king oh praise the of the Lord our God, oh praise His name forevermore, for endless days we will sing Your praise, O oh Lord, O oh Lord our God. shall return in robes of white the blazing sun shall pierce the night and I will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on Jesus' face oh pray the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore for endless days. We will sing Your praise, O oh Lord, O oh Lord our God. O oh Lord, O oh Lord our God. Oh seated and children are dismissed to Children's Church.
Amen. Good morning, Harvest. Uh, I need to give you an nice announcement first. Uh, if you have a blue Saturn, the lights are on. Uh, license plate AB, ACB 9681, I think. So if you have a Saturn, because we love you, we want you to go and turn off the light. So, so that's it. So after saying that, just uh, thank you, Pastor Scott, for uh, last Sunday message. Thank you for giving me a half day off uh, last Sunday. I only, I only did one message that Sunday, but thank you, really, Pastor Scott, for that message. Uh, I guess, uh, the ho- I guess, no, I, I, the, whole, the whole sermon was really good. And the closing of that message, putting all the Bible verses together as one letter to know, to remind us what, who is God and, and what he did for us. It was just a great message, so thank you, Pastor Scott, for that message. So let's get into the message today, Second Peter chapter 1, verse uh, 16. Before I go into the message, allow me to remind you the setting of this letter. Persecution was at an all-time high. Christians are being arrested. They're being killed. Some of them being beheaded. Uh, others being impaled on sticks by Caesar himself. And all that is happening from the outside. So there's a lot of persecution, and that's happening from the outside. But now from the inside, you have false teachers and false prophets infiltrating the church, trying to destroy the, the real gospel, trying to destroy what Jesus did on the cross. Uh, so the church being attacked from outside and from the inside. It's like, I don't know if you have times in your life where you feel like you're being attacked from every angle, that you feel like everything is going wrong at the same time, that you feel that it's just that. In, in every direction, everything is, is not going well. So let me tell you something. When, when, when you face times like that, the only thing that you have to endure, the only thing that you have to keep moving forward, the only thing that, you, that, that will give you strength is conviction. It's to know that what you know is truth. It's, not a, it's, it's truth and it's an absolute truth. What I mean about that is when you know that what you know will not change. It's a truth that cannot be changed. It not be changed by time. It's not, not going to be changed by external circumstances. It's going to be a truth that is truth forever. And that's the message today. That's what the Apostle Peter is talking in this letter. So verse 16. For we did not follow cleverly devised myth when we make known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He said... What we're saying to you, they're not myths. So we need to understand something. A fallen humankind, we want answers. We want to explain even the unexplainable. We want to explain stuff. From there, you got myth. There's this, there's the, the word mutas. It's from you got mythology. And mutas or myths are just bizarre and ridiculous tales without any real evidence of historical facts. It's just that. People trying to explain something. That from there you got like people that are trying to explain what happened, how humans discovered fire. Because fire was an important event in human history. And then you have from mythology something like Prometheus just gave fire as a gift to humankind. And then Zeus found out what happened and and just condemned Prometheus to be changed to a rock in the Adriatic Sea and Volstor pick out his liver. And how you have sicknesses, oh, that was the Pandora box. So people try to create, create these fables and tales to explain something. Uh, that's human nature. Like, we as humans, we like to ask questions. If you don't believe me, take a road trip with three kids. <laughs> Better if they are from the age of three to five years old, and you will be answering a lot of questions. And sometimes the same question multiple times. I remember years ago, that was 20-something years ago back in Puerto Rico. In our hometown in Puerto Rico, uh, there's a very big uh, brewing factory. I don't know what happened inside the brewing factory. I don't know the process. But I know they have chimney. And you can see like white smoke. It's like vapor coming out of the chimney all the time. So one day we're, one day we're driving by this factory with my wife and me and our niece. And she's at that time around four years old. And she looked at the chimney and said, hey, uncle, what is that white smoke 
coming out of the chimney all the time. So I knew, I know, I need to have an answer. If I don't, if I don't have an answer, I'll be listening to this uh, endlessly. So I need to, so in that moment, I create an answer. And I say, yeah, so that's good that you ask. Because actually, that factory over there is a cloud factory. So here in this town, we manufacture every cloud that you can see in the sky in Puerto Rico. If you go to any city, any town, and you look up and you see a white cloud, remember, we manufacture that, and we send it to different places. And she was quiet. She was so happy. He was so excited about that news. The only problem, I end up forgetting that. And a few days later, I find out that she's talking to other kids and sharing this truth <laughs> that I fabricated, that I created just to keep her quiet. So I have to say, yeah, that was a joke. It was an actual, it, it's not an actual answer. But that's humankind. We like to ask questions. Well, yeah, that was more than 20 years ago. I repent about that, so I'm fine. So, but... It, we like answers, and we like to explain everything. So, but the apostle Peter is saying, when we're talking about Jesus, we're all talking about him. We are not fabricating a tale. We're not fabricating a fable to explain something that is unexplainable. And he said here, why? He said, he said over there, uh, but we were witnesses of his majesty. He's, he's not saying I was a witness. He said we were in plural. We were witnesses of his majesty. And he says over there, I, let me go back in that same verse. It says, but we did not follow cleverly divided myths when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So during that time, even when, when you, you started this letter, sometimes you're not going to see the, who, who are those false prophets or false teachers. But we know, as a historical fact, they are around the same time of the letter. And in the same region, you have the Gnostics. And the Gnostics are people that say they have a knowledge that nobody else has. And they're denying the power of Jesus. They're denying that Jesus is God. They're denying the, the, the incarnation of Jesus Christ. They're denying the virginal birth. They're denying the miracles. They're denying the power of Jesus to pay for our sins. They're denying... What happened on that cross, they're denying the resurrection and they're denying the second coming of Jesus Christ. So that's happening during that time. And that's what it says over there when, when he talked about the power and the coming of Jesus Christ. Actually, it's the second coming is the word in Greek, parousia, that is used for the second coming. And it's what happens in verse 17, it says, For when we, when we receive honor and glory from God the Father... And the boy was born to him by the majestic glory. This is my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. We ourselves hear this very voice born from heaven. For we were with him on the holy mountain. So he's talking in plural. He's talking about an event that happens. And which one is that event? Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. It says like this, verse 1. And after six days... Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here. One for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. And he was still speaking, when behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved son, with who, who I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples hear this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and have no fear. And when they lift up their faces, they saw no one. But Jesus, but, but Jesus only. So he's saying this. First, I know that Jesus is God. I know the power of Jesus. I'm convinced of this because I was in that mountain and we experienced the same thing. I know what I saw. I know what I hear. 
I hear the voice of the Father saying, this is my beloved Son. And not just me. I have two other witnesses with me that day. And at the same time, we all saw and heard the same thing. So this is true. That he is saying, I know I was there. And not just me. I have witnesses. This is, he is defending now the power, the reality of Jesus Christ. And their witnesses to confirm that event. So they go to that mountain. Jesus Start his face is glowing, it's, it's bright in the moment. You have Moses and Elijah. Why, why Moses and Elijah? Because the Bible said that Jesus will come to fulfill the law and the prophets. So Moses represents the law and Elijah represents the prophets. But the voice that was there said, listen to him. That voice of the father is saying like Jesus is, is, is bigger Jesus is, is bigger than Moses and than Elijah. They were all talking together, but he makes a reference. Jesus is not like Moses or Elijah. He's God. He's my son. So listen to him. So he's saying, what you know is truth because we have experienced, we experience something that we know is true, that it happens. I cannot be denied. Also it says, it's defending now the second coming of Jesus Christ. If you know the Bible, Revelation chapter 19 start explaining what happened when the New Jerusalem, New Jerusalem is coming down. But in Revelation chapter 21, it says this about Jesus. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it. For the glory of God giveth light. And his lamb is the lamb. So the light is Christ that shines more than the sun or the moon. So and that's exactly what happened on that mountain. He saw Jesus being transfigured, and he saw the light that they saw. What, they, what Peter saw when he was with Jesus in that mountain is just a preview of what is coming. It's just a preview of the second coming of Jesus Christ. He is seeing a tiny preview, a trailer of what is going to happen. That's why Jesus is transfigured, and he can see the light and everything over there. So, so he's saying, I know... That what the Bible says is truth because I saw Jesus transform in front of me and I saw that light. We saw that light. So he's saying, I know that this is truth. I know that Jesus is the Son of God and I know that what the Bible said about his second coming is truth because I saw a preview of that. And then he moved to uh, verse, uh, verse 19. And we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed. To which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place. Until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. So first, it's, first he's saying, I have a personal experience. And that personal experience, because I have witnesses and I know that it wasn't just me. I have other people with me and they show and hear the same thing. That personal experience is telling me that. Jesus is the son of God, that he is God, that his power is real. And also I know that he's coming back, but now he is presenting another line of evidence. He's saying, not just because I saw it, not just because I hear, but I, also, I know that it's true because my personal experience is aligned with, with the Bible. It's aligned with the scripture. I know that what it's saying over there is they go, they go together. So it says... As we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed. So just remember this. When you have a book where you find a prediction that God's people will be in slavery in Egypt for 400 years. And then it happened. And then the same book predicted that these people will eventually be in slavery 70 years in captivity in Babylon. And then it happens. When you go to Isaiah chapter 45 and it says that the temple is going to be destroyed and that prediction is a hundred years before it happens and then it happens. When you have in the same, in the same chapter, Isaiah chapter 45 said that King Cyrus is going to rebuild the temple and King Cyrus was not even born. The name is the name and the title of a person who's going to re rebuild the temple, start rebuilding the temple is there 160 years before it happens and that's just... That's just an example. When you have a book with talk about how many things the Messiah is going to do and fulfill. And Jesus came and every prophecy is fulfilled in Jesus Christ. I think that is a book that we need to pay attention. 
because everything that it says over there, every prophecy on the Bible has been fulfilled. Just we're waiting for the second coming. But every other prophecy has been fulfilled. And it says, it says like this, knowing, knowing that first, oh, let me, let, me, let me go back a little bit over there. So it says like, I know that what I saw and what I hear is according to what the Bible says. Personal experiences without a biblical foundation, it doesn't mean much. But when you have a personal experience that is attached to what the Bible said, then the, then the Bible is confirming that that is right, that is truth. It is truth. So that is what he's saying over here. And then he adds another, an, another layer of evidence over here. And it says, knowing that this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. But I want to clarify something. That verse over there, when it says own interpretation, it's not talking about the understanding of the Bible. Some people think that, that it means that not everybody can understand the Bible and somebody else needs to tell you what it says or what it means. It's not what it says over here. When you go into the original, it's talking about the origin of the prophecy. It's talking about where it's coming from. What it says really is it didn't come from their own mind or by the prophet's own imagination or from the prophet's own understanding. What he's saying over here is that it, what is the, every prophecy on the Bible is not that one prophet one day was looking at the sun or, or the moon or the, or the stars or the clouds and say, oh, it will be nice to write about this and start writing. No, it just didn't happen that way. Every prophecy was inspired by God. It's the word of God. And then he said this about, about the man who wrote the Bible. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So that's an article term. And that means when you uh, lift up or raise your uh, sails and then you let the wind take the boat wherever the wind wants to take it. That's, what the, that's the expression over there. So that's why when you read the Bible, you can see different styles. You can see, you can see personalities because they, all, they were writing diff, according to their different styles. But the end product, the finished product is the Word of God. And how we know that? Because even people writing at different locations and different times during history, they all align. When you go and check the Bible, there's no contradiction on the Bible. When you go and check the Bible, there are no errors on the Bible. If you check the Bible, they all align because God is perfect. He doesn't make mistakes. He, he doesn't make any errors. That's why you, can, you have an inerrant, uh, an, an erring uh, Bible with no mistakes. So he's saying like, I know that it's truth because of my personal experience. I know that it's truth because I have witnesses. I know that it's truth. Because the Bible say it, and it's confirming what I, what I saw, what I hear. I know that it's true because every prophecy over there, it was not inspired by men, but it's the word of God with no mistake, with no errors. And I know that is truth. So let me say this to close. First of all, we always talk about love God and love others. So from this Bible verses, how can I apply this? How can I... Love God and love others. First, if you see what happened on that mountain, Peter, Peter saw uh, Jesus be transfigured, saw Moses over there in Elijah, and he goes like, oh, I have a plan. I have a plan. I, was, I mean, I think he wants to show love and respect to them. And he goes like, okay, what about if we build three tents? One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And he, he starts talking about the plan. And he was, he was still talking when the voice of the father interrupted and said, this is my son, listen to him. So sometimes when we are overwhelmed, sometimes when, we, when our minds are running fast, we need to take a break. We need to pause. And instead of telling God our plans, we need to listen to him. What is his plan? What is his plan? Because that's what, he, that's what the fa Heavenly Father say that to Peter. Oh, you have plans? Don't explain me your plans. Don't explain me how many tents you're going to build and how are you going to do it. This is my son. Listen to him. 
So do you know, listen to him is a good way to show that you love him. Listen to him with a humble heart that is willing to do what he's asking you to do. It's a good way to love him. So if you want to love God, remember something. I know that it happens. That sometimes we're facing situations that our mind gets distracted. And we just have plans on what to do and how to do it. But pause for a moment and listen to him. That's a good way to say, to say yes, God, I love you. And my heart is here and my ears are open, are open, so I want to listen to you. And second of all, how do you love others? Be that man of God or woman of God. Be that brother or sister. Be that, that person with true conviction. Be that man of God that your family needs. Somebody, somebody who really has a conviction. Somebody who doesn't change because know that the truth is truth. And it's, un, it's an undeniable truth. It's a truth that it will never pass. It's a truth that it will never be changed. So be faithful to God. Be faithful in what you know in your faith. And be the man of God that your family needs. And that way you can show love to them. Be the woman of God with conviction. Enough conviction. Even the, with the testimony you can win your uh, non-believer husband. Or be those parents with conviction enough. So you can raise, raise kids in this world. In their society, and even when society is saying different things in their homes, they're seeing conviction. They're seeing, they're seeing parents who truly believe that Jesus is God, that he was born, that he paid the price, that he resurrected, and he will come back. So when you are a man or a woman of true conviction, convicted by the Holy Spirit, knowing that what you know is, is, is a truth, it's undeniable truth, it's an absolute truth. When you are a man of conviction, that's a good way to love others. Because people need to see around them others with conviction. So I will, I will end this message today this way. It is time in this uh, society where things are changing constantly. In this society when, you know, no, no, no disrespect to science. Well, science is changing constantly. So some people, oh my God, is the science. Science is changing constantly. What science said 100 years ago is not what it's saying today. And they're not just adding more. They're saying, no, what we thought 100 years ago was false. Now this is truth. So there's so many things, values, and so many things in society changing constantly. But there's only one absolute truth that our God <laughs> is an awesome God. That our Father designed a heavenly plan for salvation of humankind. That the Son, Jesus Christ, came to earth. He was born in a manger. He died on a cross. And he resurrected the third day and he's coming back. And there's the truth. That the Holy Spirit is God. And it's here and now. It's in you and it's in me. And it's guiding the church. It's moving the church forward. And we know, I know that it's truth. Because every person in history... They have surrendered their life to Christ. Their life has been transformed forever. So to close now in worship, I will invite uh, the worship team to come back to stage and just finish this morning together saying, my hope is built in nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. So let's stand up and let's worship together. What you know is truth. What you know is not a fable. What you know is not a tale. It's not a myth. It's the truth. Built on nothing less 
in Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. darkness veils his lovely face i rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil on christ the solid rock i stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all my soul, my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and say. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, I may in then in him be found. Blessed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Amen. So, Father God, we ask you for your help. That the Holy Spirit will create a conviction in our hearts to know that what we know is an absolute truth that will never be changed. It's not going to be changed by circumstances happening around, around us. It's not going to be changed by time. It's not going to be changed by, by politics. It's not going to be changed because it's truth. And it forever will be truth. So we trust you, God. And we want to be men and women of conviction. So thank you for the word of God. And thank you because the Holy Spirit will add to this. Um, thank you because we are standing in firm ground. Because you are our solid rock. So thank you for this church. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Church, remember, love God, love others, and never forget that I love you greatly. So have a uh, great uh, day. I think we have, uh, we, we're going to have a uh, study over here later. So 1025 for a while, grab coffee and something to eat, and then we have uh, our adult studies over here. So thank you for everything. I love you. Amen.